Hi guys, it's Kelsey. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be giving an update. It will be like a first trimester recap since I really haven't given an update since I think about eight or nine weeks. So a lot has happened in my first trimester, a lot of symptoms, and um, I just wanna fill you guys in on how that all went and basically try to get you up to speed. I will say that today I am 16 weeks pregnant and so I've been out of my first trimester for a little bit. I will make sure to let you guys know how second trimester has been going but for now I'm going to go back and try to focus on all the symptoms that I had in my first trimester and basically how I was feeling up until my second trimester. So one thing that started pretty early on maybe about eight weeks or so is my sense of smell kicked in so strong. I could literally smell everything. It was really annoying because at times, you know, when you just want to eat or something like that, but the smells are all so strong, then it like turns you off from the food and you're not really interested. Also like at work in the break room, you know, I could like smell the garbage or smell the fridge. And like, obviously I still have that sense of smell very strong and it's, not the funnest symptom, but then again, it's not the worst symptom to have. Like, it's not that bad. Also, I'm going to be looking down at my phone because I have my notes for everything on here. So on top of the sense of smell, also like no food really sounded good to me. Like I, I was really just not craving much at all. I was more like I guess I would say I had more food aversions than anything else, but not even like aversions. It wasn't anything specific, but like, we'd be like, what do you want for dinner? And I would just be like, I don't know, like nothing really sounds good. So that was going on. Uh, obviously I had some nausea. Um, you guys, I had told you guys about that. I, I didn't really throw up much at all, but I always kind of had that like constant nausea feeling going on. And, um, and so that probably didn't help with the, you know, no food sounding good. Um, and then I did have some weight loss in the first trimester, nothing major, but um, I just, I wasn't eating as much as I used to. I just wasn't interested in, in food that much. So I will say it's a little surprising that I did lose weight in the first trimester because the only thing that I was really craving was carbs. I was craving bagels, pancakes, waffles, like toast, bread, like anything like pasta. I was just craving carbs and I, and I did eat a lot of carbs in my first trimester. So the fact that I still lost some weight was a little surprising to me because I was eating like a bagel a day, sometimes too, I'll be honest. But anyways, I was definitely craving carbs. And the only other thing that I really craved in my first trimester was orange juice. There was one night where Vanessa had made dinner and to me dinner just didn't look good, smell good, taste good. I wasn't interested and she's like, all right, well, what do you want to eat? I'll get you something else and I said, I just want a glass of orange juice and then I had three glasses of orange juice and that was it that was all I wanted so orange juice was a strong craving for me and um yeah other than that it was carbs I mean I was literally dreaming of pancakes I, I still have the vivid dreams the dreams have been really vivid and strong and I would wake up dreaming of pancakes craving pancakes and just you know want to get some Another symptom that I have been having, which is the best symptom, I would say, is that I have not had any acne since I started my pregnancy. My skin has literally been the best it's been in my entire life, like since I was like 11 or 12. Like, it's really crazy. I actually got one spot so far and that's it. So that's a really nice 
um, thing to have going on. I've got, you know, really good skin. And I guess I'm thanking baby boy for that. <laughs> so on the flip side of that, there's a lot of symptoms that obviously are uncomfortable and, you know, not as fun. I don't want to seem like I'm complaining about every little thing that I went through. Um, but I do want to like just make note of it. And it's kind of interesting to see how, you know, these symptoms show up in pregnancy when they go away in pregnancy. And it's kind of cool to just document like the things that you're going through, you know, in the first trimester, second trimester, or what have you. So um, another thing that I noticed probably around 10 weeks or so was that I started having a really hard time falling asleep. Whereas before that, I was so tired, I would just you know, like really early in the pregnancy, I was really tired and I would just pass right out and I'd sleep great. Now I have a very hard time falling asleep at night and coupled with the fact that I wake up three to four times a night to go pee. And then when I lay back down and try to go back to sleep, I'm awake, sometimes awake for hours, two hours, three hours, because I'm just struggling to fall back asleep and stay asleep. Um, so that has been pretty like tough to handle because obviously I still work and I have to wake up in the morning and I want to feel refreshed. Um, on top of that, I started having more like stomach pain and obviously I was having some like irritability and nausea early on, but it kind of would turn to like just like a stomach ache like feeling um i would i started to have like a little bit of heartburn at night um and just that like i don't know like belly ache at night so um and i noticed that like whether i had a big dinner didn't have a big dinner had a snack didn't have a snack like i always kind of had that like uncomfortable stomach feeling. So um, I just, I eat these little candies called gingins and those tend to like help a little bit to just ease the stomach, settle the stomach a bit. Um, they taste horrible to me. If you're a ginger fan and you like ginger, then you might love them. My mom loves them. She's like, oh, do you have any of those candies? I'm like, candies? To me, like to me, ginger is like spicy and like, weird tasting so I don't love them but I love the fact that they help and so I do keep those handy um at night and have a ginger if my stomach is really bothering me um another thing that I noticed is I get the hiccups all the time like I get the hiccups when I'm hungry and my stomach is empty and it doesn't have anything in it I will get them after I eat as well so I'll eat a meal, be full, get the hiccups, have the hiccups. I'll be hungry, get the hiccups, have the hiccups. So I don't know. I'm just getting used to them. I just let them roll, I guess. Nothing else I can do. I do the little tricks, hold your breath and everything. But but yeah, the hiccups. And it's funny that it's not like only after I eat, like it's like random kind of. <laughs> I still have the like gassiness, the burpee, the indigestion, like, like I said, just a little bit of heartburn starting, nothing major, um, but that I've had since the beginning, the, the, the gas and the bloat, and maybe that's where the stomach ache is coming from, um, but uh, that has continued through throughout the whole first trimester. Um, but I feel lucky enough that I haven't puked. I only puked one time and it's because I brushed my tongue while brushing my teeth. So since I have been pregnant, I have not been able to brush my tongue, which is not the best because when you're pregnant and you, you have like, you know, the sore gums and bleeding gums is sometimes a symptom as well. So you want to make sure you're like, teeth and mouth hygiene is like at its best and here I am having to like skip half of my you know brushing routine because I just can't if I if I go too far I will just gag and then it's over so I just avoid it altogether so I don't have to deal with it and I haven't thrown up since so 
that's my trick for dealing with that. <laughs> um, I will say that early on in my pregnancy, you know, before, before eight weeks, before even like, you know, maybe right around eight or nine weeks, I didn't have any sore boobs, tender breasts, anything like that. And I did notice that like later on. So I've had some of that. There was one night where it felt like they were like bruised. Like that's what it was weird to me because I would think like tenderness wouldn't feel like that, but they were like really sore. And they haven't really been that sore to be honest, which is kind of nice, but I did notice it a little bit. And um, that's about it on that front. <laughs> So the final thing that I will say is that I have been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So my OB wanted to do the glucose test early on in my pregnancy. And usually they wait until like 24 weeks and beyond to do this test. But my doctor recommended we do it early in my pregnancy. She wanted to just know what was going on. I have a higher BMI. And I think that's kind of why I was like categorized in that you're going to have this test earlier than normal. So I had my one hour glucose test where you drink the drink, you go in your do doctor's office an hour later and they test it. And I failed that. And because of that, I had to do the three hour glucose test, which was a big pain in the butt. And they say that if you fail more than two of the, you know, blood draws, because they do four blood draws over the three hours, one's your fasting, then one hour, two hour, and three hour. And if you fail two or more of those, then you're, you know, diagnosed with gestational diabetes. I failed all four. I failed the fasting, the one hour, the two hour, and the three hour. So I have gestational diabetes. Um, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail in this video just because I plan on doing another video just to kind of keep you up to date with what's been going on. I've had some more doctor's appointments and we've found out a few more things. Um, I will say that in one of my other videos, the doctor had mentioned that I had type two diabetes prior to being pregnant and she was incorrect about that. Um, we did some more testing and found out that I was in what's called a pre-diabetic range. Um, so I do not have type two diabetes. I should not have diabetes when I um, finish my pregnancy. However, however, being in that uh, pre-diabetic range in general does predispose me to having diabetes in life if you know I don't make some better changes health-wise. So um, I've really been focusing on that. Like I said, I will go into a lot more detail uh, as to what I've been doing and kind of the treatment plan for the gestational diabetes. Um, in another video, but that basically catches you up to speed all the way up through my first trimester. Now I've been into my second trimester for a few weeks now, so make sure you stick around and subscribe if you're not subscribed so that you can see what's been going on in my second trimester. I will have an update for you guys shortly on that. Oh yes, there was one more thing that I wanna say. I know you guys are probably interested in a bump date. I have been posting bump dates on my Instagram, so make sure you check out Tessier Family Vlogs to see those bump dates and um, photos of my progress. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.